So I expect everyone to follow along with me. Yes, you over there. Now then, once again, I hate monkeys. You'll obey me now, monkeys. Suguru Gato has never changed because his main mission as a Jujutsu sorcerer was to protect and preserve a proper society. At first, he thought the best way to do this was by protecting the weak, but then he decided the best way was to preserve the strong. Welcome to Cartoon Herb. Today we will be analyzing a villain from Jujutsu Kaisen, the anime that's taken the world by storm. This is Suguru Geto, the bad guy trying to do good. For those of you who haven't watched Jujutsu Kaisen, or have watched season 1 but forgot about it, here's some context on how it works. Basically the main villains of the show are dark spirits known as curses. Curses are monsters that are born from negative human emotion. Prison realm, I'll add it to my collection. And in return, I promise you, I'll kill Gojo. For example, there is a lot of regret and guilt in a place like a prison or a school. These negative emotions become energy that piles up and creates curses. Places like these that are sources for negative energy are usually the birthing grounds for curses. Every year in Japan, there are over 10,000 unexplained deaths. These are the results of curses killing humans. Normal humans can't even see curses, so there's no way they can fight them. And that's where our heroes come in. Jujutsu sorcerers are responsible for fighting curses, since they alone have the power to do so. But this kind the negative energy that creates curses is known as cursed energy, and Jujutsu sorcerers have the ability to control their cursed energy in order to kill curses. Think of them as the super-powered police force responsible for fighting curses. They fight curses using cursed techniques, which are abilities that they're born with. Since you have to be born from a certain bloodline, and your cursed technique is usually inherited, 80% of being a Jujutsu sorcerer is genetic. It's a lot like Naruto, if you think about it. But instead of using chakra and jutsu, they use cursed energy and cursed techniques. This brings us to Ghetto's arc in the story which is the hidden inventory arc. Suguru Geto and Satoru Gojo are two students studying to be Jujutsu sorcerers and their best friends, since most classes of sorcerers comprise of like three people. Geto and Gojo are both the strongest people in the entire school, even though they're only in their second year of schooling. Imagine being in 10th grade and being stronger than all the juniors, seniors, and even the teachers in your school. Gero has the ability to absorb and control curses, which is insane. And Gojo's power is so OP that I don't even fully understand it. OP is anime slang for overpowered, by the way. Anyway, during the arc, they're both sent on a mission to protect a little girl. And as they're about to complete it, they're attacked by a mercenary named Toji, who's got so much black Air Force energy, it's not even funny. Almost forgot. How's Megumi doing? Who's Megami? Toji defeats Gojo, kills the little girl, and beats Ghetto to the brink of death. Gojo eventually recovers in less than 24 hours and gets revenge by defeating Toji in a rematch. But Ghetto? Ghetto was never the same after he lost that fight. A year later, Gojo has surpassed Ghetto and stands alone as the strongest sorcerer, arguably in the world. Because of this, Gojo goes on missions alone, and so does Ghetto since he's the second strongest. Even though Ghetto's ability to absorb and manipulate curses is so OP, it doesn't come without its drawbacks. Here's how Ghetto describes what it's like to absorb curses. No one else understands what cursed spirits taste like. It tastes like swallowing down a dirty rag used to clean up shit and vomit. Yeah, man. Not the greatest thing in the world. This combined with the fact that being beaten up by Toji still irks him, results in Ghetto becoming evil and deciding to destroy all curses by killing all non-sorcerers. See, since Jujutsu sorcerers can control their cursed energy, curses can't be born from the cursed energy of Jujutsu sorcerers. So theoretically, if all non-sorcerers were killed, then curses would stop being born. Ghetto realizes this, and decides to wipe out all humans who are not sorcerers, and lovingly refers to them as... Obey me now. That's the true feeling I chose. Monkeys. That brings us to the main point of this video, which is the fact that Ghetto's descent into evil was not a change of character, but a change of tactics. In my opinion, 
Suguru Geto was always evil, or at least capable of evil. He wasn't a good guy who went bad. He is a bad guy trying to do what he thinks is good. Let me explain. A lot of the video essays I've seen online talk about how Geto turned evil when Gojo surpassed him as a sorcerer. His jealousy of his best friend's power caused him to want to be important. So he realized the only way he could be important would be if he became a villain. Uh, Satoru had become the strongest. Suguru. This is wrong because Ghetto still cared deeply for his best friend when he went bad. Bring back a souvenir. You bet! Do you prefer sweet stuff or are you more of a salty guy? Satoru might want some too, so sweet I guess. Another theory is that Ghetto turned bad when he spoke to Yuki. But this is false because Ghetto already considered himself a bad person by then. Don't worry about her, Gato. She's not a bad person. I can tell I'm a great judge of character. You say that, yet you're sitting next to me. Hmm? All that conversation did was confirm Ghetto's feelings, and it gave him a strategy to execute what he was already feeling. He would have come to the same conclusion later, even if he didn't speak to Yuki. The reason why Ghetto was evil goes back to why he became a sorcerer in the first place. Suguru Geto became a Jujutsu sorcerer in order to create and protect the proper society and he believed that protecting the weak people in society was the best way to create and maintain a proper society. Survival of the weakest, that's the proper shape of a proper society. The weak help each other and discourage strength. Listen Satoru, Jujutsu exists to protect non-Jujutsu sorcerers. Geto was literally prepared to fight against Gojo when Gojo laughed at his ideals. And that just shows you how important creating and maintaining a proper society was to him. Even back then, Ghetto was arrogant, apathetic, and completely full of himself. Most of you just didn't notice because of how much more arrogant Gojo was. However, after Ghetto was beaten to the brink of death by Toji, and after he watched Hybera die, he realized how hard it would actually be to protect the weak. And as a result, he began to resent them. Absorb. Over and over. Exercise. Absorb. As powerful as Ghetto is, he has a very weak character. When he was the strongest and felt that he was invincible, he had no problem sticking to his ideals and his idea of how to protect the proper society. But as soon as he realized that he wasn't invincible, that it could be him that ends up dying on a mission next, he completely changed his tune. How could he stick to his ideals without ending up dead or depressed? What meaning is there to Jujutsu Sorcery? if he's just protecting a bunch of people who don't even know that Jujutsu sorcerers like him exist. Who am I doing this for? Damn monkeys. Questions like these must have been flying through his mind. It's very clear that they were from the way he spoke with Yuki. Suguru Geto then came to the conclusion that the best way to have a proper society was to create a sort of utopian society where only sorcerers exist and there are no humans or curses. In defense of Geto, this kind of makes sense. For example, if you've watched the movie 300, you'll know that when a Spartan baby was born, it was inspected, and if it was sickly, disabled, or incredibly small, it was killed. Now despite the fact that this is an extremely wrong tradition, you can't argue with the results. The results being the Spartan army becoming one of the greatest armies to ever exist, a people who were so strong that they didn't even build walls to protect their city, because they figured that if someone wanted to attack them, they could take care of them themselves. Now I don't know how historically accurate that is, but if you think about it, would the Spartan army have become that strong if they had just let anybody join and fight beside them? It's brutal, but kind of true. Another example is school. If every student were placed in the same class, regardless of their actual intelligence, wouldn't it hold back a lot of the smarter kids? Think about it from Ghetto's perspective. A society that preserves only the strong, is a society without pain, without struggle. Now of course this is wrong when you think about it logically. Nanami had a similar realization about the realities of being a sorcerer, but since Nanami doesn't have a massive ego and god complex like Ghetto, he decided to leave Jujutsu sorcery and chase a bag instead. Ghetto's philosophy is also false when you think about it properly, because in any society, the weak far outnumber the strong, and if one were to destroy all people, simply based on the fact that they were weak, then there wouldn't be much of a society left to enjoy anyway. Thanks for the recent support on my channel. 
I'm officially declaring that I will be pushing for monetization in September, so if you enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing.